Hey everyone, this is Toxic Romance, the series that takes romance movies and shows and tears them apart like the garbage they are. This month we'll be focusing on The Ugly Truth, directed by Robert Luptic and starring Katherine Heigl and Gerard Butler, the former portraying a strong-willed and perfectionistic TV producer who hasn't had much luck in the love department. Enter Gerard Butler's character, the crass host of the titular TV show. When Catherine's Abby and Gerard's Mike collide, you'd have better luck mixing oil with water. Get ready for objectification and sexual harassment, because this movie is full of both. Let's dive in. I'm already going to stop and say that all of the songs that they use in this movie, I could easily make a This Song Sucks episode on. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Right here. Oh, hello. Thank you all for coming. You guys look great. Thanks for being here. Is there a reason they're, they're all over there? Oh, they have forecast wrong. Research shows people are more willing to forgive a fat guy. Fat shaming. Because they couldn't handle it. But you, you, my friends, have balls the size of Volkswagens. Don't think I haven't noticed. Well, only thought of them as blue of late, but you're right. Casually joking about blue balls. They're quite sizable, but not disproportionately so. I like to think of them as aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, I think I made my point. Skip. You want to be a lonely hag? Then that's fine. Keep reading these stupid books. But you want a relationship? Here's how you get one. It's called a Stairmaster. Get on it and get skinny and get some trashy lingerie while you're at it. <laughs> Look at that. More fat shaming. Oh, I'm sorry. I was eavesdropping out the hall. <laughs> what did I tell you? Isn't this guy great? Thanks, boss. You already hired him? Who's this delightful creature? I'm your producer. Hey. I like it when we're on top. Sexual harassment. Well, while we're making these observations, Georgia, you two project this image of the perfect couple when clearly it's a lie. My point is that your husband hasn't had sex with you in, <gasps> I'm going to say, what, three months? Shanley, that is not my fault. I know. I mean, come on. No, I know it's her fault. Why is it my fault? Making it the wife's duty to have sex with her husband? Let him be a man. I, I, I let him be a man. You have to let me be a man. You have to be a man. You have to let me be a man. Let him be a man. Let me, God damn it, Georgia, let me be a man. No! Oh, oh, zoom in on that. Just zoom in. Oh, there are guys who want to see this. And that, my friends, is the ugly truth. Essentially encouraging them to have sex over live TV. A fake laugh is like a fake orgasm. Fake orgasm is good? No, but a fake orgasm is better than no orgasm at all. Fake orgasm is no orgasm. Only to you. So you're not the only person in the room, you know. Let's not be selfish. <laughs> if she's not the only one in the room, shouldn't he be thinking the same thing? You have to change your look. It's wrong with my look. You're a very attractive woman, but you are completely inaccessible. You're all about comfort and efficiency. It's wrong with comfort and efficiency. Well, nothing except no one wants to fuck it. Objectifying women's bodies. Well, you better start. Because if you don't want to have sex with you, why the hell are we calling? This is probably the only decent advice that he gives. The whole, if you wouldn't have sex with you, why would he? <laughs> no, really. We are very excited about this year's rating increases. And we're hoping that in the next quarter we can... Oh, oh God. What's wrong? Skip, skip, skip. I'm basically just going to summarize this section for you guys because it's pretty disturbing. Mike goes and buys her some vibrating underwear. Then she ends up wearing it for dinner. Suspend your disbelief. A kid ends up with it. Mike finds out that the kid has it. And then does nothing to stop this kid from playing with her vibrator. Pretty sure this is sexual assault. Sorry, buddy. It's Mike's way. Did you know he had it the whole time? The whole time. Just part of the time. I figured I should let you finish. How kind. After the dinner, Abby is only a little bit upset about Mike not stopping this kid. But if it were you or me, I don't think that this would be played off as such a joke. Again, I see this as sexual harassment. At the minimum, sexual assault at the worst. We're going to skip over the nonsense montage of Abby dating Colin Moore and Mike getting jealous over this. Mike and Abby clearly start lusting after each other and don't really know how to tell the difference. Tell me what happened to me over here. Should I tell Colin to go? No. When confronted by Abby's question, Mike chooses to run away. What did you do to him? I didn't do anything. He missed the flight all on his own. 
He quit this morning. Then proceeds to quit the job without telling her. I'm Jack Magnum, and this is the ugly truth. We're watching the show so you can learn how to get chicks. Well, let me assure you, you're in good hands. You're looking at a guy who personally has had sex with over 137 women, most of them conscious. This guy's clearly a rapist, and they are playing him off for jokes. I'll no longer be able to do the ugly truth. Which should really come as no surprise, because men are completely unreliable. Men are not strong. Men are not brave. Men are afraid. Because why? Men are weak. Let me tell you something about women. Huh. Hey. Women would have us believe that they are the victims, that we break their hearts for sport. I'm not even quits crap. This whole situation here is just an overgeneralization of both men and women. All men this, all women that. That's not how it works, and it's annoying. You're in love with me. Why? It beats the shit out of me, but I am. Not only is there the issue very common in all of this genre of lust being confused for love, but also love being confused for loathing. Oh, Mike, you're crazy. And then of course they have sex. Now that that disaster is over, let's talk about some of the things they don't discuss at the end of the movie. What happens with Mike in that job at the local competing network? Does he simply break contract and go back to the previous network? And how exactly is that supposed to work? What happens to the network after their last broadcast? Frankly, I don't see how Abby's network is supposed to recover from all of the nonsense that was just broadcast towards the end of this movie. Abby might have been concerned about the show going under before, but I think she's got many reasons to be concerned about it now. We see Abby and Mike having sex at the end, but that doesn't really mean they're in a relationship. Again, I don't think that they're in love, I think that they're just in lust with each other. They want to jump each other's bones, so who knows what it'll be like once all of this sex is out of their system. Do I think they have a fighting chance? Not particularly. All in all, The Ugly Truth is a perfect example of romantic comedies perpetuating these toxic ideas about what relationships, romance, sex, and basically everything in between should be like. The Ugly Truth tells you that it's okay if you guys don't have anything in common, that it's okay if she's dating somebody else, that it's okay for him to be a complete misogynistic jerk. As long as you guys are willing to have sex and she's willing to fake her orgasms, you can make it work. That sounds like a great relationship. Throw it in the garbage where it belongs. I've been SJ Lyon, and until next time, stay safe, everyone.